so that these guys can kind of play off each other and we can talk about some things that James does musically. James, I understand that you compose music for movies, and I was going to ask you, what is your favorite style of songwriting? Uh, you know, I, I write what you would call, it's sort of new agey sounding, you know, very soundtracky stuff. For me personally, I, I go with sort of a symphonic sound for me, uh -huh. but back in the old days, I was total heavy metal kid, you know, I mean, played wow. bass and heavy metal bands and uh, stayed active until a couple years ago in, in the music industry also. Now, Robert, she got smart. <laughs> Robert, I did not know until you got here that James interviewed you and the guys in King James years ago. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. I mean, I remember parts and pieces of it, but, you know, when you go out on tour, it's hard to remember everything because it's going by so fast at you. But, yes, I do. And I remember making some comment, James, at a King James concert, or uh, there was something. James. Yeah. Tell me what you said earlier about how another crew was supposed to show up and film. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that night, the promoter at that show in Walnut, Illinois, had advertised there was going to be a film crew there. And for some reason, the film crew couldn't make it. So they were praying really hard to get another film crew to show up since it had already been advertised. And I call up and say, hey, I have this cable access show. Can I come down with my cameras and film the show? Like, we were just praying. And you just, it was like a few minutes later. So... So I came down and God sent me, I guess, to, to film that show that night. And even though it's 18 years later and I'm finally giving you a copy, I, I'm sorry it was so delayed. It's really snail mail there. It's, it's okay. <laughs> that is so remarkable. Yeah, prayer does work. I've seen it answered many, many times. Now, how many times have you seen Striper in concert? I've seen Striper six times and Michael Sweet once on the real, his second solo album. I saw him uh, back in, I think, believe in Elgin, Illinois. But I've seen Striper six times six total. Times. First time on the In God We Trust tour in Rockford, Illinois, you had White Lion open up for you. Yeah. And they actually allowed us to bring cameras in as long as there was no flash, which I, I was like... I don't get that. Yeah, I was like, hey, this is... Well, I got pictures from that night, actually, dude, that came out. That so. was a great stage. That was my favorite Striper stage. I mean... That, which stage was that, Robert? The In God We Trust. In God We Trust. Yeah, that was a great... Just the, the, the rows of the, the, the cabinets there and all the... Yeah, of course, you had the the fireman pole that you climbed up love, to get to the drums. I love climbing up it and swinging it around, but you know, there was a really bad trick pulled on me on the very last date of the In God We Trust Tour, so I put Vaseline on the pole. Oh no. And it was really dangerous because I grabbed a hold of it about halfway up and I slipped and fell down and landed on my knees. I could have broke both my kneecaps. Wow. But you know what? I got back up on that pole and did the show. You're, well, on stage you're a, prof a total professional. You're always professional. Thanks. I try my best, but you know, that was a 105 piece kit, eight kick drums, and it was a 5,000 watt main underneath, hanging underneath the grating that my seat was connected to. So whenever I'd hit the snare drum, if you can imagine 5,000 watts coming up at you, and Normally that deafened you, but we were playing, you know, coliseums with high ceilings, so it, uh -huh. it was okay. But that was a great tour, man. That was just the, the great time of, you know, four trucks and four, semi, uh, four semis and four buses and a merch truck and going out with the 40, 40 people. And it was wonderful. I still have the ticket stub. You know how much it costs to go to that concert? No. Fourteen dollars and fifty cents. Wow, what a deal. <laughs> yeah, and I, I look at that now, I'm like, wow. It, it didn't cost fifty dollars to go to a show like it does now. Now everything is real expensive. You know, I met a uh, not a roadie, but a guy that was part of the lighting crew uh, when you were on tour. He toured with the band. He was part of the lighting crew when you guys had the big cross. Right. You remember that, James? Yes. And he said yesterday that what happened is that after. After you quit working with that lighting company, they took that cross and he went on tour with Black Sabbath and they turned that cross upside down. Was his name Willie Twerk? No, it's not Willie. His name was Keith. Keith something. He wrote it down for me. I really yes. think uh, Willie Twerk was one of the greatest LD lighting directors that I've ever seen in my life. I, re I remember Willie. He's, he's amazing. He worked with you guys during the To Hell with the Devil tour. And in God we trust and soldiers under command. He was like six six, 
and he'd have me, here I am, 5'10", lift him up to pop his Oh my God. <laughs> I wonder why my back hurts today, but. Nice. Now, James, tell me the name of some of the bands that you've been in. I played in a lot of Christian heavy metal bands myself as well. Uh, the first band I ever played in was called Bethany, which we know is it's a town over in the, in the Holy Land somewhere, I believe, yeah. or, or yeah. at least used to be. Yeah. Uh, I was in another band after that called Liberator, and uh, you know I just felt like those kind of names, people knew what, what you stood for in the, in the yeah. title sometimes, like Striper, you know, Salvation Through Redemption, Yielding Peace, Encouragement, Righteousness, you know, that, that meant more than just a name, you know. He's a bass player. He's a bass player. And the bass player and the drummer work together very closely, on not only on stage, but in recording, you know. And so I wanted to point out to the fans out there that he's a bass player as well. So, um... And Tim Gaines is one of my influences for, for listening to him play. You've taught me a lot about how wow. good bass players play. You know? you know, Timmy, speaking of Timmy and bass players, Timmy doesn't really, I think, get a lot of recognition where he should. He is really an excellent bass player. I know. He, he When you kind of pull him out of striker and, and you listen to him play, I've just, I've had a couple of times where I've just sat back and just listened to him in the studio, just kind of jamming and plunking away on stuff. and. Uh -huh. He's amazing. He really is. He's a he's a great player. Yeah, I would like to hear him playing like that too, right in front of me, because I, I always hear him in mixes of stuff too. But you can still hear the brilliance come through. Every one of you guys in that band keep up with each other, you know. And, and there's no weak links in strike. No, you know, and it's always been a strong also, group. They're all they're all so wonderful, you know. I, it is. I, I just think it's a magic. Each band has that magic when you find the right people, and it's you know most of the time it happens by accident or destiny that you come together. But you have to have that. And, you know, every band that really makes a mark has that 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 togetherness that that locks you together. You know, like a link and chain. And it's so hard to put four or five guys or six guys together that are all equal, equally talented. That I mean, or or have the same mindset. You know, that think alike professionally. That bring the magic. That yeah. right. Complement one another. There's just this un spoken magic that happens yeah magic maybe isn't the right word but you know what i mean it's just yes. a special it's, you jail special you, everything vibe. clicks it yeah. vibes together james tell us about uh did striper play any role in you becoming a christian or i, I was actually was born again a couple years before i knew about striper mm -hmm. and i was I, I was had the good fortune as a kid to have our neighbor was was our babysitter. My mom worked a lot. She went to Tulip Street Church in Mitchell, Indiana, and we went with her, and they, they paid to send me to uh, church camp, uh -huh. like two summers in a row. Well, the third summer, I went, they went to a new church camp, and this guy gave this awesome sermon one night, and I was like so blown away by what he did. I said, can I talk to you after you're done about what you said alone? He's like, sure. So we, everybody else leaves. We go outside the chapel. We're in the Hoosier National Forest in Indiana, beautiful stars and trees. And I say, you said that if you don't accept Jesus, you can't go to heaven. What, what do I have to do to be part of that? And he explained to me, I believe he quoted Acts 10.9, which was, I, I may not get this perfect, but it's if you confess with your lips and believe with your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. Something similar to that, right? I believe he quoted that to me. And I remember that night because he prayed with me, put his hand on my shoulder or my head, and, and I accepted that night. It was the turning point for me. I felt like I was a Christian as a kid, but I hadn't really acknowledged it. It was just part of life. You were too young to understand. To understand it, yeah. And that night, he, he, he had. We did it right then and there, under the stars, and it was just amazing. I wish I could remember the guy's name so I could thank him all these years later yeah. for, for mentoring me into something better. But God knows who it is. Exactly. And it's like you almost you, you don't know when you make statements like that who is going to affect decades down the line. If that's true. I've always thought that Robert would make a great actor, and I'll tell you, when I started thinking that was when Striper first started, and he filmed some, you did some filming for TBN. I think the whole band did, but you were a standout, you know? Oh, and I mean, being an actor would be a dream. I've always looked at actors as the guys that have the greatest job in the world. You know, they get to, to live something 
that they've always wanted to be and then go back to being their self and get uh, pay great sums of money for doing it. I mean, wow, I would have loved to have been an actor. But well, there's still it, hope, man. Maybe I'll, I'll write a film for us, bring it up to town, and we'll, we'll do something, see what we that's can pull off. That's another thing he does. He writes scripts. He directs. He's a cinematographer. And he, I'm learning as I go, he too. You come up with a story about a, you know, a band that uh, believes in Jesus, <laughs> but is having a, a, a tough time because they're discriminated against by the, you know, the record industry, and they somehow yeah. beat the odds. Well, odds. you know, a lot of Christians are discriminated against in the film business now, too. Am I right, James? It, you know, it can be difficult because you have to, you have to play parts sometimes that are questionable, but but God told me in my heart that somebody has to play the bad guys. Right. And it doesn't mean that that's who you are, but, but people, they sometimes assume if you're a Christian, maybe we shouldn't ask him to audition for this, this right. guy that's a killer or something. And it's film. not really a realistic assumption. Exactly. And you'd be amazed how many times people confuse me with the characters I play, too. Like, they'll get mad at me for something I did in a film. Like, it, was, it was only acting. I, did, I didn't actually do that for real. I didn't kill anybody. I, so, Remember you know, how it, it, Kyle it, used to work on a lot of films, Robert? Yeah. And I, she became a Christian when she was working on films. And sometimes they hesitated to ask her to do makeup. Because, Maybe a Christian makeup artist doesn't want to work on a film like this, you know? I almost feel like it's become acceptable to pick on the Christians, you know? Uh, let's not pick on the Jews or the Muslims. And really, Christianity is a, is a Jewish religion. Right. Yeah. About Judaism, but it seems like it's become acceptable to pick on Christians. I don't think anybody should be picked on, whether you're a Christian, an atheist, a Muslim, a Jew, whatever you yeah. are, you know. But uh, I think sometimes Christians kind of need to, to do what Jesus said, be as wise as a serpent, as harmless as a dove, and kind of go in there, be undercover, you know, be the wolf in sheep's clothing. And it doesn't mean you have to go in and be the wolf. And be no, 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 no. You don't have to go in, you know, acting Mr. or Mrs. Christian all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Holding Bible verses, walking around with the right. Bible, and here I am, a guy that's thrown Bibles in a crowd before. But, you know, when I'm off stage, I, I don't I don't try to push that on him. Right. But I always find God brings people to me that ask questions. Always. You know yeah, what it is? It's, it's doing, showing by example instead of beating people over the head, you know, like, you're going to become a Christian and that's it, you know? Well, that's, that's not Christianity, though. No. Jesus never did that. And, and you know, a lot of times you don't even get a chance to show by example. Right. But God will bring someone in and you'll have those few seconds or few minutes with them. And, and God will lead you to say just this very perfect thing that is from his spirit that touches someone. Right. Yeah. And we hope that this interview touches you guys out there. Thanks for viewing. Uh, thanks to James Blackbird and thanks to Robert Sweet for joining us here. Thank you for My watching. My name is Janice Sweet. You can see this interview at Terry D. Torres on YouTube. Thank you and God bless. Again to live again till